Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. Now, can you tell us about the very promising findings uh, of Chile's Green Hydrogen Valley Study? It's interesting that South Africa's Anglo-American is helping South America's Chile to go into green hydrogen. Now, we saw Anglo-American in general and Anglo-American Platinum in particular, you know, go ahead with green hydrogen plans in our own Limpopo area, and those are still continuing. But in the meantime, there's been a national strategy in Chile where Anglo-American already uses 100% of solar power. The renewable energy prospects there are enormous. It's not just the sun, but it's also the wind power that they've got there. So they feel as a previous Minister of Energy was quoted as saying that they're going to have the cheapest green hydrogen on Earth. And this might be the start of it, which is also good for the platinum group metals industry. Obviously, Anglo won't be directly involved in platinum group metals, but Anglo-American platinum will be listed separately on our Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And of course, that sort of green hydrogen development is, is always important. But at the back of all this, <coughs> the need of companies to actually provide s inclusivity and sustainability to the countries in which they live. And, and this came out in the sustainability update of Anglo-American, where you find today it's absolutely fundamental that you have to do things that are good for the environment, you have to do things that are good for the people, and of course the governance always has to be there in the ESG. And so they are underpinning really what is a national strategy in Chile to try and bring in the central zone of the area into green hydrogen. And I think it'll be a good lesson for the world if, if they come through with that. And of course, they've also tried to go into clean transport there. So you have the mine uh, mining operation there, which is, of course, all copper. So, you know, they're going into copper in South America and Peru and Chile. They're also trying to get in green transport and that bus that they showed us a picture of is green hydrogen driven. So that could also be the start of something good there. And speaking about sustainability, can you tell us about Implat's 35 megawatt solar project and its expanded uh, smelter at Zimplat? Yeah, Zimplat's in Zimbabwe is often shown up in their reports as being quite a positive part of their, their operation. And it's good to see that, you know, they're putting in clean energy into Zimplat's uh, 35 megawatt also expanding you know the operation with a, a smelter and so this is all coming about of course when it's very difficult to navigate in platinum group metals at the moment because the prices are here and there and of course that will be as we saw from the quarterly report coming out from implants the the big focus is making sure that you know you navigate the cost you do everything you can to make sure your capital allocation is really well placed and looking forward they believe that this year they'll score in all of those areas but it's taking tremendous focus because the prices go up and then they sort of slip down again and you need a good basket there to really do things at the moment so management is really having to work very very hard in these platinum group uh, metals businesses and we see good focus coming through from implants Lastly, De Beers is urging entrepreneurs to take part in its local business development program. Yes, you know, De Beers, a diamond is forever, and all the advertising that went with De Beers, you know, created huge demand for, for, for diamonds. And in that, that era, it was uh, very much De Beers was in control of global diamonds. The fragmentation has come about now, and there are a lot of different people involved in diamonds. But you see De Beers still realizing that the actual marketing of these diamonds is very, very important. So they're calling on South African entrepreneurs to come in now for, for training in diamonds, mentoring in diamonds, to see about the design, to see about all aspects of diamonds, because the world has changed. And unless you understand, you know, why people are getting engaged and how the engagements work now, you, you're not going to be able to market properly. So to get entrepreneurs in 
and be inclusive here in South Africa, they will really understand the market. They'll understand the mining and they've got to be innovative. You know, these days you've got to be innovative. You can see um, Botswana, you know, the, the diamond sales in the first nine months were 50% down. So the world is in such a disrupted state at the moment. You know, people are here and there and, and the diamond sales are not good. So this sort of effort to bring South Africans in, become entrepreneurs within the diamond sector, understand, bring in their innovation, that diversity that you need now, is looking to making sure that uh, the natural diamond future is there. And we can see they also went in with a, a jewelry company recently, Signet, to make sure that those natural diamonds now get the benefit of uh, people's attitude towards engagement, marriage, all that sort of activity. And it's very important to do this because at this point in time, they'll probably have to cut down their supply of diamonds because people are just not buying them. And I'm sure they will do that, but hopefully at some stage you'll have that demand building up again and uh, get entrepreneurs like they're trying to create very active in South Africa. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. A great pleasure, Sashni. But that's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.